everyone and thank you so much for joining me for some Saturday Night Crafting. Tonight's video is really awesome. I'm so excited about it. I had a play. I discovered something new and really, really exciting and I can't wait to share it with you. Now tonight is all about embossing ink. So we are going to use sticky embossing ink and we are going to create some really awesome Christmas cards. Now this is a video that took me four days to film because I couldn't stop putting everything down and I had so much fun. Now if you watched my video on using photo paper, this is kind of a step up from that and we are going to use photo paper in this but I'm also going to share with you how you can do all these kinds of things without using photo paper, hopefully with something that you've got in your stash already. I'm using every kind of medium, I'm using all kinds of papers and I'm going to share with you how you can create something to this effect and have a really awesome fun time in your crafty room. So the first thing I'm using is gloves because we are getting inky and messy and you don't want to have stained fingers, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm using gloves, I'm using water, I've got reusable washable cloths because I do go through quite a few of them. I'm going to use a background stamp uh, for one of my parts of my technique but you can use anything you've got and I will share with you as we go. Um, the other options that you can do if you don't have a background stamp, I'm going to use ink refills. You could use oxides, you can use distress inks, anything water-based is what you want. You want water-based coloring um, effects, uh, coloring supplies. So I've also got these powders. These are Pretty Gets Gritty um, explosion powders. They are so much fun. There's lots of these kind of powders on the market. I've also got some of these ones here from Creative Expressions. Um, whatever you've got in your stash that is water reactive color should work for this technique. And I'm going to share with you all these methods here on my screen and how they look and how they work, as well as different kind of card stocks as well. Now, if you're new to card making and all you've got is a couple ink pads, we can work with that as well. You can use just a regular ink pad as long as it is water reactive. So a dye based ink, not a pigment ink. You can do this technique. So here's the star of the show. We've got Versamark. I've also got the Wow um, embossing ink as well. So I can recommend Versamark as well as Wow's embossing ink. They are really good sticky inks. That's what you want is a clear sticky ink. They're often labeled as a watermark stamp pad and they're used for heat embossing. So in front of me on the screen, I have got watercolor card, which is this slightly yellowy kind of card stock here that I'm touching. And I've also got plain, normal, ordinary white card stock. And those are the ones we're gonna start with. But then I very quickly move on to photo paper because that becomes the second star of the show. It is amazing stuff to work with in card making. You get such gorgeous designs with it. And this technique with the watermark stamp pad is unreal when you use photo paper. So I'm starting off with just plain white cardstock and I have stuck in my stamp into a stamp platform and I'm just going to ink it up with that clear ink and do nothing else. I'm just inking it up. You can stamp once, you can stamp twice. I do stamp twice, but you really only need to stamp once. It does retain that ink nicely. Now I did do this and leave it for 24 hours and come back and then try to carry on. You don't want to do that. You want to kind of do it within an hour to two hours of stamping that ink down. Otherwise, it absorbs too much into your cardstock and you won't get the effect that we are going for. So I'm going to do quite a few at a time because I want to save time. I want to do bulk card making. So I am stamping a whole bunch of these little panels um, with my embossing ink. And then we are going to move on to the next bit of the technique. Now, this is just an ordinary baking tray if you've got a glass mat. Anything you can kind of put on your work surface to protect your work surface because these inks will stain. So I'm just using a dollar store, dollar tree baking tray that cost me one pound. And these are great. I can wipe them up really easily. The first product I'm using is the Explosion Powder from Pretty Gets Giddy, Gritty, and I am just tapping a little bit of that down. You honestly don't need much at all. Spritzing it with some water and then sticking my cardstock down in it. Now, if I've missed any patches, you can go ahead and dab it some more, and you're just sticking it down. Now, it looks like hot mess, doesn't look like much, but when it dries, the wow factor starts to show up, and it's really quite cool. So you can kind of see that pattern there, but I'll show you it when it's dried, and you can really see that pattern pop out of it. And again, I've done nothing. I've just stamped it with Versamark ink. I've not used embossing powders. I've not used heat. I've not done anything. I've just stamped it with that ink. And now I'm applying it onto my cardstock using water and whatever color medium I've got. So here's the two colors I'm using from Pretty Gets Gritty, Unicorn and Poseidon. They're gorgeous purple and blue. So what you can do as well, whereas when we move on to later down in the video, I do spritz water first to kind of help that powder sit and not kind of float around the air so much. And then I spritz it again with water to activate it a bit more. 
So these powders are really good fun. You can mix and mingle with different colors. Obviously you want to avoid making mud color when you're using them. So do think about your color wheel and your colors that you're combining together, but you can mix colors. You can use single colors. They do, when they explode, a lot of these powders have the different kind of color elements showing through. Now I'm doing this where I'm rubbing on some of my uh, reinker, but later in the video you'll see I'm actually gonna fill it into a spray bottle and that works a thousand times better. So I just wanted to share with you, if you don't have a spray bottle and you've just got the reinker, then you can do this, uh, but it does give you a really dark saturation. So if you're going for really dark, really pigmented, this is the way forward. You can get a really gorgeous, vibrant background if you use the reinkers direct onto your surface. If you want it to be a bit lighter, a bit less in your face, then you can use a spray bottle, add some water, and you can dilute that down, and you'll see that in a minute. Now, because I've got so much ink here, I do about four prints. I lift it up each time, and you get this gorgeous effect, and you can see the watermark stamp pad kind of resisting that ink a little bit, but also absorbing the color. So you're getting that pattern coming through, but you've got all that gorgeous color to it, and it was so easy because all we had to do was just stamp. There was no embossing or anything involved. Now, if all you've got is some ink pads, these ones are from Lisa Horton. They're water reactive ink pads. You can do that as well. I'm just gonna smush a bit down onto my surface, spritz it with some water, and again, stick my cardstock down and pick it up. It's not as nice as the sort of free flowing inks um, that you can get using powders or the reinkers, but it is still effective. You still get that pattern showing through. The technique is still there. It's gorgeous. You could have a little play with maybe some um, daubers or sponges and kind of mix up that color a bit more. Now we're going to bring in the hot shot of the show. We're going to bring in the photo paper. I love working with photo paper and I'll do a little review at the end of the video where you can see a couple comparisons of the photo papers I've got in my stash and give you an idea of how they kind of work. But they are amazing. Watch this magic happen. So I've got the photo paper, I've done the same thing, I've just inked it up, I did a whole bunch of panels at once, and then I started dipping them into my different elements, or my different mediums, I should say, sorry, I don't know why I keep calling them elements. But you get this gorgeous look where, where we've stamped just stays the photo paper white, and all the color kind of goes around it. It's a bit difficult to see while we're going here, but when I start to move into using some of the um, reinkers, and putting them into a spray bottle, you can really see that magic pop. So here's my first one where it's really saturated, really dark. If you've got too much ink on it, you will find that it, you might struggle with it drying, but you can always dab it off with a bit of a tissue as well and soak up some of that um, excess color. Now I did leave all of these overnight to dry, but you only really need to leave them maybe two or three hours until the paper is fully dry. And that's all you gotta do. Now, oxides are really, really good fun with photo paper. If you've watched my original video, and I'll link it down below for you so you can check it out and see all the different techniques I did over there with different mediums. Oxides are really fun because they look like a hot mess, but when you wa wipe off that oxide layer on the top when it's fully dry, you get such amazing marble kind of look to it. So it looks really cool. So it kind of looks like this hot mess. You can't really see the pattern, but that's because the oxides have this sort of powdery residue in them and that is sort of covering it up. So I'll show you how you get rid of that powdery residue and you get the magic pop through. So this one you can see a bit better and a bit clearer. Now I've gone out and got my spray bottles at my cupboard. Uh, these are just from Amazon. I just bought like little sort of 10 mil spray bottles uh, ready to do this sort of stuff where I can make my own little sprays. I'm putting about five to seven drops in each bottle. And then I'm just gonna squidgy in some water, top it up with water. I'm only making what I'm using because I don't wanna leave this and have it go sort of moldy. I'm not using you know purified water. I'm just using bog standard water, but I use it all up in this video. I actually made a couple more rounds of it because I had so much fun. Now I'm spraying direct onto the photo paper, but the better method, which you'll see in a minute, is spraying it directly onto the surface below and then dabbing in your paper again. This way you're getting kind of that halo misty look. You've got the effect of the spritzer going on, but what you really want is that nice, beautiful saturation. Now, if you've not got spray bottles, you could always take a brayer and go direct to your paper and you could brayer on and you still get that image popping through. So there's just tons of ways you can use this Versamark ink and have fun. Now this is one of the first ones I made, and how cool is this? This is all dry, it's fully dry. This was with the Pretty Gets Gritty powders. This was the third impression. So this was the third time I stuck the photo paper in, and it seemed to absorb all of the shimmer just where the Versamark was, which is really cool. 
Now here's where I sprayed onto the paper. On the left is regular white cardstock, on the right is the photo paper. You can see the massive difference between that. Again, those are the powders onto um, cardstock, regular cardstock, and onto watercolor cardstock. So you got the two differences again, regular cardstock here and watercolor cardstock there and you still get those gorgeous images coming through, but for me, the magic is the photo paper. Now, this is where it's a bit damp and a bit wet still. This is left after 24 hours. You can just take a tissue and rub off that excess and it won't affect your picture whatsoever. I do actually come in with water and wipe off the oxides with like a damp cloth and it doesn't affect the photo paper at all. So you get these gorgeous images and the photo paper for me is where it is at. I absolutely love working with it. It is such a fun product to work with. You can get it in the charity shops. You can buy it on Amazon. I'll link the one that I buy on Amazon. It is currently sold out um, in the, this size, but you can get all different kinds of sizes so you can make it work. Now, all I'm doing here is wiping off this excess powdery residue on the top, but you can still see that it's not fully showing through. It still looks a little bit powdery. And the way to get around that is to just spritz your cloth with a bit of water, get it damp, ever so damp, so not so saturated and soaking wet, but you want it damp. And then you can go ahead and use that on top of your photo paper and you can go ahead and rub off all that extra, um, um, not embossing, all the extra oxide powdery residue and look at the pattern and the design. How beautiful is that? It is absolutely stunning. I really love this. I, like I get so addicted and I had so much fun. I made probably a good oh, 40 to 60 prints. Now the key to getting the Versamark off your stamps. So let's say you've done your stamping and you want to clean this up. It is quite sticky and water doesn't really do it. All you need is some isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. You could use like hand sanitizer that's got alcohol in it and just spritz some of that on there. I fill mine into a spray bottle and then you can rub it right off. Easy peasy. Now you don't have a background stamp. Grab your sentiments. If it's Christmas, if it's birthday, whatever theme you're doing, just grab one of those stamp sets and just start layering them down. So I just grabbed a whole bunch of my Christmas stamp sets. I went a little bit mad and had a bit of fun on um, scrapbook.com and ordered a bunch of new Christmas stamp sets. The Trinity stamps ones are amazing. They are kind of like my go-to stamps for this video. I'll link them all down below. So if you want to check them out, you can. Um, and all I'm doing is creating my own background. So I just stuck a whole bunch of the stamps down. They are actually still on my stamp platform. I'm not peeling them off anytime soon. I want to make some more. And I've got this gorgeous background. I layered Christmas as my focal point right smack in the middle. So that if I wanted to just use that background as is, then I could. Now I'm not going to share with you all the methods of doing the colors again. I'm just going to kind of stick them down, lift them up for you in the video because it's the exact same as what we've just done at the start of the video and this video is quite long so I didn't want to bore you with that but that's how you can make a background stamp out of whatever you've got in your stash. Now another amazing way to do this technique is to do some shadow stamping. So I am taking my Merry Christmas stamp and I'm laying it right into the middle of the panel and I'm going slightly to the left. So I'm not aiming for the center of the panel, I'm aiming to go to the left of the panel. And then I'm stamping a whole bunch of these. I did a lot of these ones. Again, I'm gonna skip through all of the coloring because I want you to just see this sort of after effect and it's the exact same as before. So here I am spritzing instead of spritzing the actual paper, I'm spritzing the background. Now when that's all dry and ready to go, we can do our stamping. So now I'm going to come in, I wanted to share with you, I did some more of that background as well using the spritzing. I had a lot of fun with um, the spray bottles. Now we're going to come in and do some stamping. So you want a permanent ink for this um, technique now. You want to make sure you move on to a permanent one so it really sticks onto that photo paper. So I'm using Versafine Onyx Black. It is a fast drying pigment ink. I've also got Versafine Claire inks. They are pigment inks as well. So you want to give them a little bit of time to dry um, just so that they don't smear or smudge. Now I'm lining up my black stamp now central and you get this gorgeous white outline. How beautiful is that? So you can do shadow stamping with this technique and create this beautiful kind of almost dimensional layered look. And again, I've done this one in a purple ink to show that you can kind of change up the colors if you want as well. Just make sure you, you are using a permanent ink pad when you're stamping on top of, to, of the photo paper just to make sure it sticks really nicely. So there's two different versions. 
Now if you've gone a bit heavy handed with the powders and that mica powder is rubbing off a little bit, um, you can go ahead and set it with some hairspray. You can actually sort of seal it into that photo paper and it gives this really gorgeous extra glossy look when it's done and dried. But do be careful because if you stamp on top of this, it then will smear because you've kind of put a protective layer down. So you'll want to sort of heat emboss on top of that, which I don't know how well that will work with the photo paper. And if you stamp before you go and spray it with the hairspray and you're using a pigment ink, it will bleed. So just be aware of that if you're using some powders. So I'm going to move on to creating some cards now. So I've used that stamp set, I've done that sort of beautiful shadow, and then I'm just layering it up with some glitter card, some die cut elements I've got in my stash, and making some beautiful finished projects. So these are just some ideas for you to give you some inspiration on what you could do. This is just glue and glitter. I stuck down and then this one's layered and made into a slightly bigger card. Now for this one, I did use Pretty Gets Gritty Sparkle and Shine um, Christmas die set. This has quite a few snowflakes in, really gorgeous snowflakes, and the snowflake from that set is what I use on my main design as well. So I had a play. I played with a few different methods. I did all those cards that I just shared with you, and then I came up with this core method. So what I like to do is create a style that I like that's quite easy to bulk make, and then I go ahead and die cut and prep everything put it on a film and die cut all my die cuts, stamp all my stamps, and then I start assembling an assembly line. So I've got about 15 of these cards created and they didn't take any time at all once I got that design down and ready. So I'm using this cute little doily oval die and I've cut another out of my lighter sort of backgrounds, I cut another panel using that um, that I'm gonna stick down in the middle and then I've gone and cut one of those snowflakes from the Pretty Gets Gritty Snowflake set. And I've done that in the glitter card that kind of matches with my background. I've stuck to sort of color themes. So if it's primarily purple, I've done primarily purple colors, reds, then reds, that sort of thing. Um, I like Christmas cards that are not traditional colors. So I love purples and teals. Those are kind of my Christmas color cards. Um, but obviously, if you like the traditional red and green, go with that. I did a few of those as well. To add a little bit more character to my card, I'm using this metallic thread, which I bought in a set from AliExpress. I got like 12 of them, and they've been going for about six years now. <laughs> um, I love them. They just sit on my desk, and it always gives a little bit of an extra oomph behind my sentiment when I put it down on my card. Now, I'm stacking them three times so that I don't have to layer foam behind it. It gives it a bit more stability, makes it a bit stronger, and not quite as thick, because I did pop up that first element on some foam. And that is my core design done and ready. And so all I did was sit down and bosh out a whole bunch of them. So here are my Christmas cards ready to go. I'm probably going to give these ones out to um, our neighbors on the street because they are a little bit more dimensional. So I don't have to worry about thinking about whether they'll fit through a um, standard postage box thing at the post office when I go to post them. Uh, but they are really cute, really fun, very unique and they're all created by hand. The backgrounds are created, little die cut elements are created, absolutely stunning. And I love that Christmas stamp set. That is new from Trinity Stamps and I love it. I've got the Merry and I've got the Christmas and you can either die cut them or you can stamp and then die cut. There's so many different ways that you can interchange them. They're really good fun. And I'll make sure those are down below for you as well if you wanna check them out. So here's my traditional Christmas colors. I did red and green and I've got some matching envelopes as well. It really pulls your card together when you've got a little envelope that matches and goes along with it. But we're not going to be done here. So these are my Christmas designs, but I also took it another step further. And that stamp set I shared with you at the very, very, very beginning, the background stamp, it's not quite the size of a card base. It's a bit smaller, so I thought it would be perfect for making tags. I've got this tag punch from Craftelier and I thought it would be absolutely perfect for some cute little tags and I don't have to use any brain power. I do have a video which I'll link down below and hopefully in the top right where I share with you how to make all kinds of tags from all kinds of different things. Um, really great video if you want to have some tag making ideas. These stamp sets are so cute from scrapbook.com and they work perfect for tags. So I punched out two. I punched out a tag out of the photo paper and a tag out of plain cardstock, glued the cardstock to the back of the photo paper so that I could then stamp on the back because the back of the photo paper is a bit sort of shiny and the ink wouldn't take to it very well so I put on some cardstock on the back and then it also made it a bit more substantial and thick like a tag. 
Now this is other photo paper that I bought when I ran out of the stuff that I used uh, for this video because I used it all and I went and bought some more and it's the same brand but it's not premium and I wanted to see what it would be like if it wasn't premium. So it's 240 GSM not 250 but I found such a massive difference with the photo papers. So the not premium one had a very paper like back to it. Whereas the premium one is just like when you get photos printed at the shop, it's got that kind of shiny, silky smooth, plasticky backing to it. So I found that the ones um, that weren't premium did curl, but they did absorb the color just as well as the other photo paper. So it did work just as good. It curled a bit more and wasn't as thick and as substantial. Um, now here are all my leftover bits. I've got all the ones I did on cardstock and on watercolor card, as well as a bunch of the photo paper ones. And I have yet to turn those into cards. So if you've got any fun ideas, shout them down below. Uh, I would love to see what your thoughts are. If you stuck around for the video so far and stay with me this whole time, thank you so much. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share my video, uh, drop me a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on my video today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Bye.